Hey there and welcome to my channel. My name is Shelby Mary Beth. I am so excited to be sharing part one of our son's space nursery decorate with me today. This video is packed with a ton of satisfying speed cleaning, speed painting, tips and tricks on decorating, painting, designing, and how I did everything to decorate this nursery. So excited to get started in here. So I'm gonna do the prep work for the paint first. So I'm gonna be filling in these holes. I'm so excited to be getting started on our baby boy's nursery. I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant with our son and I'm starting to get to the point where I'm uncomfortable and tired because it's so hard to sleep at night, which is a struggle because I have the strongest nesting urge to get everything done. So this room has always been more of a storage area for us and this past year it turned into a makeshift workout room and office because we made our den which used to be our office into a playroom slash like homeschool room. We knew this room would eventually be a nursery, so we didn't put any extra work into decorating in here. But now that our son is due at the end of the year, we are ready to transform it into its final dedicated space for him. It is painting day up in here, so don't mind my outfit. I've literally had this since I was 16. It even has some paint. Let's wait it. Uh, the orange and green is from my room when I was like 16. So I'm gonna get started painting. I'll show you the colors I picked out. From Home Depot, I always get the Gildan brand. I like the premium. And then um, this color on three of the walls is gonna be this light gray. So this color is called Elemental. So the door to this room is right here. So usually you wanna put the bed, it looks best, on a wall facing the door. So this one already has the window on it. And then there's actually not that much space here for a crib. So I'm planning on putting the crib right here. So this is gonna be my accent wall. This wall I will be painting. It didn't have the Gildan Premium in the smaller container, so I ended up doing the Bear Premium. This one they color matched because I did pick it out in the Gildan colors. Um, so it was called Napoleon. It's this really dark, blue color. I've always struggled with paint leaking through my tape so I decided to try this frog tape out for a change. Because I'll be working with such a dark color, I knew I was going to need a good tape that wasn't going to let anything bleed through. My eyes, for whatever reason, always get drawn to areas of painted walls where there are imperfections so I'm usually very careful around the edges where there is the most contrast. There is a dark blue accent wall in our master bedroom and it took me hours to paint just one wall because I literally took a paintbrush and went all around the edge by hand to make sure I had those nice clean lines. So by taking the extra time to tape everything off, you really save time in the long run if you can keep the tape from bleeding, which is why I'm trying this new frog tape out. My husband took the time to move all of his workout equipment to the center of the room so that I could paint, but our plan is to move all of this to the garage, which is another project in itself. So while I was prepping and painting in here, my husband was cleaning up the garage and prepping it to become his new workout space. So on top of having the tape, I also like using this edge roller. The pads for it come in a pack of two for just a couple dollars. And in my opinion, it is a must have for painting. I also like to cover my paint tray with a trash bag. It makes it so much easier to clean up at the end. If you still have paint left in it, you can just turn it inside out and cut a hole in the bottom and drain it back into the can. And then you don't even have to wash off your paint tray either. I'm going to start with my light gray color. This is going to be on three of the four walls. I've painted so many walls before, so I feel comfortable with how much paint can be on the roller without dripping or making a mess. So I actually don't paint with a drop cloth. It's pretty risky, so I don't recommend it, but for me, I end up tripping on it and the drop cloth just tends to be messier when I have one because I know it's there, so I just don't use one. So I'm starting by doing all the edging around the room, and as you can see, the color I'm painting this room is actually very similar to the color it was before. 
It is lighter though, and once it dries, I'll show you the difference. But the new paint also has more of a blue tint to it, whereas the color on the wall I have right now has more of a purple tint. So I've used this edger before without putting tape down, and if you are careful and don't load too much paint on it, it works really, really well. But I've found that I get the edging done so much faster when I tape off the edges, because like I said before, my eyes get drawn to imperfections. So when I paint without the tape, I take it so much slower because I don't want to mess up. I didn't film it, but shortly you'll see me go right into painting with the roller, but I did end up doing a second coat of this edging. No matter what paint I've tried, I've always had to do two coats of edging because the pad just doesn't hold enough paint for one coat of coverage. So here you can see where the new color has dried and how it's different from the color I had on the wall before. The new color is lighter, has more of a blue tint instead of purple, and also has a flat finish instead of the eggshell. I feel like everyone has their own way of painting, but the way I like to paint and the only way that I feel like I get the most even coverage and I don't miss any spots is to paint in strips and after each strip I reload my paint roller. Most if not every professional painter will tell you that you always have to do two coats of paint but I don't have time for that so with this Glidden premium brand from Home Depot if I paint like this and I'm not painting over a dark or extremely colorful wall I've always been able to get away with just one coat, which saves so much time. And luckily the color I'm painting over right now is pretty light and also similar to the color I'm painting with. So I was able to do these walls in one coat. I finished painting the light gray walls. So I just wanted to show you how I turned the plastic bag inside out from the paint pan. And at this point you could poke a hole on the bottom and drain the rest of your paint easily back into your paint can. I had hardly any paint left in this pan, but I did use it to hold my roller full of paint and to keep it from drying out so that if I did need to touch up some areas after the paint dried, I could just pop it back on and go. All right, I'm gonna let this all dry a little bit, make sure I don't need to do a second coat. And then I'm gonna start on this wall, which is gonna be that dark blue. I was so excited to get started on this wall. This is where we will be making the Space Constellation accent wall. I got the inspiration for this off of Pinterest, which I'll link in the description. But with that idea in mind, I had made it my own and into something I knew I could hand paint myself. I'm so happy with how it turns out. I can't wait for you to see it later in this video. So now you can see this really nice dark blue color paint. I'll link all the paint colors and everything I use in the description for you if you're using this for inspiration for your own space room. But this color ended up being perfect. I love it so much. In the dark it actually looks more black, but when the sun comes in and it's shining on it, you can see the dark blue and it's just such a gorgeous color. So just like the other walls, I'm going to paint around the edges first. And even with this dark color, I had to do the edges twice. It's just how it is with edging. I've never found a way around it. If you have, let me know in the comments. I would love to know. I got lucky with this paint color too, just like the other walls. Once I get to the roller, I end up only needing to do one coat, which saved so much time. At this point, I was so nervous about what I was going to find behind the tape. I was praying that everything I've read about this tape was true and that I was going to find some nice clean lines under it. The contrast of this color is so unforgiving. If you even get a little bit out of line, it's so obvious, especially on the ceiling since it's such a dark color. It's also incredibly hard to retouch or paint over. So if you are painting with a dark color like this, just make sure to take your time and just be as careful as possible with it. All right, I feel extremely lucky because this looks so good. I don't have to do a second coat. Now I'm just gonna take up the tape. I'm a little nervous about because I'm so scared it blood through, but we will see. Taking off the tape is usually my favorite part because it reveals the final look and usually means you're done painting, but I was so nervous. I was going to find a mess under there and I thought I was going to have to spend hours trying to clean up the edges, but I am so happy to say that this tape worked out so well for me and I'm definitely using it again. Our walls are textured, so I feel like it's easy for paint to bleed through them. 
but this tape helped me make some beautiful lines, especially along the molding. I was so happy with it. Here is our beautiful dark blue accent wall that we will be painting the constellations onto and a close up of these beautiful lines that the frog tape was able to help me with, especially this trim. I get so happy when I see how clean these lines are. I'm just going to clean up this room really quick, get rid of any trash laying around, put all of my painting supplies away and put the outlet covers back on. This is now the day after I painted when I speed things up for videos. It doesn't look like it's that much work, but I was definitely feeling the amount of squats I did the day before while painting. So this was all I did on day two while I rested my aching body as much as I could with a toddler running around. We are on to day three now, and here is my sketchy setup for my projector that I will be using to help me paint the constellations onto the wall. My husband also helped me hang this curtain rod up and shifted all of his workout equipment against the opposite wall. I used these pictures for the projector. I'll link the picture I printed out as well as the website I used to enlarge it and print it out on multiple pieces of paper like this. I think every projector is different, but mine is extremely old and very limited on how big of a projection it does. I would have loved one that could have just projected onto the entire wall but instead I used my sketchy rig to elevate or lower my projector and I had to sort through and line up nine different prints like a puzzle. It was a bit difficult, but totally worth it. So to paint the constellations on the wall, I would just draw circles around each of the stars with the projection, then turn the projector off while I was coloring them in because my projector gets really, really hot. Like so hot, it would probably start a fire if I left it on too long. <laughs> and then I took a ruler to help me draw the lines between the stars. The pens I'm using are these. I got them off of Amazon. They are an acrylic paint pen and worked perfectly. Before I even started, I thought for sure I was going to have to do two coats of paint on the stars because it's going on to such a dark color, but these pens had great coverage and I only had to do one coat. It also comes in a pack of, with multiple pens in it, but I only ended up using one and a half of these pens for the entire wall. At this point, I was starting to get the hang of it and things were moving a lot faster. I cut out a lot of the majority of the footage and time I spent on trying to get the stars to line up with each new projection when I moved it. Coloring them in really didn't take that long, but the total time I spent painting the stars onto this wall was around five hours. So I'm starting with the constellations and then I'll be filling in a lot more stars around it. The constellations by themselves look pretty cool, but also a little plain. It's amazing the difference filling in the wall with more stars makes. So at this point, I'm just hand painting all the stars randomly in and around the constellations. I tried to make some bigger ones and then some smaller ones around them. I also tried not to think too hard about where I was putting the stars because the more random they were, the more natural it looked. I also tried to step back every once in a while to make sure what I was doing looked good or to see if I missed any spots and needed to fill more stars in somewhere. The best part about painting stars is it's really hard to screw them up. It's basically just a bunch of circles and dots put together and I think anyone could do it. When I first started this project, I thought worst come to worst, I'll just buy the wallpaper and cover it up but I am so happy with how it turned out. I enjoy painting and being creative too. So this was just so much fun and I don't like struggling with wallpaper and trying to line up all those sheets either. So I'm just so happy with how this turned out. We are on day four now and I'm just taking out and cleaning up everything I can in here. My husband at this point was getting everything ready to move his workout equipment to the garage too. On this day, the curtains I ordered for this room finally came in, so I'll be putting those up shortly. 
The one I have up right now, I had just taken out of our living room because I needed something to cover the window while I worked with the projector since it only works in dark spaces. You can see my little pile of goodies here in the corner of the room. At the end of this video, I'll share what I've gotten so far to decorate this room with you, and I'll ask your opinion on a few other things I'm still deciding on around the room, so I hope you stay tuned and let me know what you think. But as of right now, I'm still on the lookout for a rocking chair and a dresser. We ordered and decided on the crib, so that is on its way. Um, that along with the finishing touches will be in part two of the space nursery decorate with me so subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell so you don't miss when i share it i'm putting up the curtains now i am in love with them they are blackout curtains and i got them off of amazon so i will link those along with everything else i've gotten for the nursery in the description for you here are some final shots of the constellation accent wall i love how it turned out i think it was totally worth all the effort i put into painting it Plus, I just love doing projects and decorating rooms like this. If you are looking to paint a wall like this, I definitely think it's something anyone could do. Stars are probably the easiest thing you could ever paint onto a wall. And the paint pens I got, and will link below, made this incredibly easy. So I wanted to ask your opinion on where to put a couple things when you walk into the room. Um, I'm standing at the door right now. The only spot to really put a rocking chair is this corner, so that's pretty set. I think I'm gonna take the one that is out of Cecilia's room. I'll put a little screenshot overlay here so you can see. Or should we go for like a blue or a black one? Um, the other thing is I like to have a dresser with the changing table on it. I'm not sure there's going to be enough room here. Initially, I was thinking that the dresser would be right here but now that we have the crib here i'm worried that the dresser is actually going to come out right to here and then we're gonna have all this empty space right here so i want to know what you guys think should i put it here and possibly have like a lot of this empty space if i do what do you think i should do with that and um if it fits here next to the rocking chair you did it <laughs> And if it's here next to the rocking chair, should I put it no. to show them here. everything we've gotten so far? What do we get? What's that? Is that part of the moon? All right, guys. So um, I got these crib sheets. Everything right here is from Amazon, so I'll link it below. But these crib sheets are just so perfect. It has the constellations on them, so it matches this wall perfectly. The crib sheets also match the changing pads completely so it came in kind of like this set <laughs> Cece wants to keep them for herself um, and then we got this super soft plush rocket <laughs> you gonna go night night with it Cece <laughs> night night <laughs> night night the moon. You're gonna show them the moon. Cecilia's gonna show you this moon. We're gonna turn it on. <gasps> Ooh. You can make it any of these three colors. So there's white, yellow, and orange. So you can make it more white, more yellow, more orange, and it's just, it's completely wireless. It charges on the bottom. But it just looks so cool. Other thing I found for his room here is this laundry basket. And I actually found this at Home Goods for $15. It's Ray done. It's super cute. Last thing I wanted to share with you guys is this mirror. It's gorgeous. It's huge. I found it at a store called Old Time Pottery around us. And it was $70. Totally worth it in my opinion. Cecilia has so much fun still playing in her mirror. So I know he will too. So this will last him a very long time. <laughs> More of a close up of these curtains. And it's definitely like this linen kind of feel. And then the back is completely white so it doesn't attract heat. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you keep an eye out for part two of this video. If it is already up, I will put a link for it right here and in the description. If not, I'll put a link for my playlist with all my popular decorate with me videos and also a playlist here with all my um, like decluttering and organization videos. That's my most popular one. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.